Hi guys, welcome to what we hope will be an exciting adventure today. This is our first ever Carpool Book Talks. We are traveling at 75 miles an hour, uh, leaving the Rio Grande Valley about 200 miles from home, and we're bored. And so we decided we'd go ahead and do a video. So if there's some shimmying or you hear some uh, background noise, people honking, things like that. Just ignore them. We're okay. If the camera happens to fall down because this is the first time we're using our stand on the dash, you know, bear with us. And if you will pardon me, I'm not going to be looking directly at the camera because I, Karen would really prefer that I look at the road in front of me. Yes, I would. And I'm, I'm happy to comply with that too. We want to arrive home alive. Yes, okay, so we're going to just um, talk about a few books that we've kind of read recently. Um, I'm going to start with a YA series that I recently, I mean, I've been seeing it, seeing it for a while, but I kind of was dragging my feet, but then a sequel was coming out and still people were talking big about it. So I went ahead and just went and got book one, and then I was ready for right when book two came out. So it's from, it's called The Royals is the series, and the first one is called Paper Princess, and the second one is called Broken Prince. So, the first thing I was not wanting, why this is misleading, is because it has nothing to do with royalty. Or it has nothing to do, it's not fantasy. But see, to me, the, the titles were making me think that. Basically, what it is, is this girl who is um, her mother, she's never known her father, she's always had to take care of her mother, kind of a, you know, she was not a very good mother at all, and then she got sick and died. And so now she's like a 17-year-old girl faking that her mother is still alive, so she won't get thrown into the system when she's so close to 18. So she moved to a different town, she forged mother's signature, somehow got herself in school, because she is determined to graduate and make something of her life. It's just that she needs to do it without people getting involved and messing up her plan. Um, well, one day at school, she gets this visitor in the principal's office, and he says that he has been looking for her for a while, he has found out that her mother has died and he is her legal guardian. And this legal guardian turns out to be the man who was the best friend of her father. Now she's never known her father, but they found out about her some way. This totally uproots her life. First of all, she's been very independent. She's been taking care of herself. Um, and so she kind of already has a bias and a prejudice against rich people. And this guy is super rich. So he takes her to her his her home his home and expects her to be a part of the family because the her dad was his best friend he loved the best friend he loves her he feels like it's his duty to care for this daughter well this man has three other kids all male and they are not happy with the father already for another separate issue but now they are really resentful that they're bringing this girl in and she's being treated there he's like you know you've got a sister now is basically what they're saying so she has all kinds of trouble she's just like I'm just gonna keep my head down till I'm 18 and I'm just gonna get out of here well of course she goes to this fancy prep school their last name is Royal that's why it's the Royals uh, got it. Um, and so they appoint run the school and so they don't really like her so they're making life for her hell at this new fancy school of course everything else is because they know she didn't come for money so basically it's like prep school drama stuff, but it's also a lot of mystery and suspense and backstabbing. It's, you know, a total, total drama. And there's love and romance that gets, gets thrown in, of course. And let me give you a warning. It is racy. It is an edgy, edgy YA. Bye -bye. Yes, yes, it is. So definitely high school, definitely. Um, the third book comes out in October called Twisted Palace. I really can't wait because book two ended with a major, major, major event. So I'm ready for it. You know, now I have to get two more books and add them to my stack. But isn't that the, the fun of uh, doing book talks for one another? Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, books that I've read recently and um, talked about recently with different audiences because I really think they're books that a large audience uh, should read and will find useful and valuable even in classroom libraries, school libraries. One is the new Kelly Barnhill that published just this week, August 9th. It's called The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I was lucky enough to read it in um, ARC uh, recently. 
Uh, once upon a time, there was a village run by incredibly evil, evil politicians. And each year, the leader, the elder of this community, decreed that the youngest member of the community, so the youngest baby or youngest child, had to be taken into the forest and left as an offering to the witch, so that the witch would leave the rest of the kingdom alone. And by and large, parents acquiesced, although you can imagine a few mothers lost their minds having to give up their babies. Well, this year, the baby is taken out, abandoned in the forest, and there is a witch who comes through the forest on a routine basis as she's going to other kingdoms. And she keeps coming across these babies left in the forest and she thinks, who in the world would just leave a baby out here for the beast to come and eat? So she takes them each year and collects stardust to feed them and takes them to neighboring villages and adopts them into families. They become known as the star children. This year, the young girl that she rescues, she becomes distracted on her journey and instead of gathering stardust, she gathers the moon. And this girl drinks the moon and makes her just an incredibly powerful, magical creature. And the problem with that is incredible power, incredible magic has to be controlled. And when you're young, you're not really good at controlling. It's a book that has friendly monsters, tiny dragons, good witches, evil nuns, uh, origami birds that fly, and all kinds of other just crazy, seemingly crazy random things, but they all pull together into just a beautiful, lyrical, high fantasy. And it's a fantasy that I think will be accessible to a lot of different readers. The other book that I wanted to mention is called The Inquisitor's Tale, and it's the new Adam Gidwitz. Most of you know Gidwitz through his grim retellings, through a glass grimly. Tall, black, tall, some group, whatever. Yeah, it, 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 again, words sometimes escape us when we're trying not to be hit by trucks. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, this is his new one. It's the story of three children. One is a monk. Uh, who is originally from Ethiopia, if I remember correctly. One is a young Jewish boy, and one is a girl um, who is almost looked at as a witch. And the three find their way together in an interesting sequence of events. And they are accompanied on their journey by a holy dog. And the Inquisitor's Tale is basically the Canterbury Tales for much, much, much younger readers, because it is a story told in saloons and hostels by a variety of narrators. Somebody will say, oh, I know what happens next, and they'll chime in with their story. So you'll get the nun's tale, then you'll get the monk's tale, then you'll get the butcher's tale. And it is just an incredibly interwoven, very skillfully interwoven series of tales that form one narrative. The Inquisitor's Tale, Adam Gidwitz, must read. I have it on my um on my iPad to read, and due to the book talk that I heard Terry do earlier this week, <laughs> I last night ordered *The Girl Who Drank the Moon* on my Kindle. So the, we cause we, we we cause each other to spend money. Yes. By the way, turn off Amazon right now. Look, <laughs> it's on. Close down your shopping cart and your wish list. Just listen to the book talks. All right. So I'm going to talk about a picture book next. The rest of mine are picture books. Um, I'm going to mention *A Unicorn Named Sparkle* by Amy Young. I tell you what, the illustrations make this one for me too is, and I, okay, so this little girl sees an ad in a magazine that she can get a goat. Damn no. It. She can get a <laughs> unicorn. Ignore that word. For 25 cents. And she spends her thing, sp sends in her money and she waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and finally a crate is delivered. And she opens this crate and she's so excited and out pops the animal that she ordered and she decides I'm gonna name my unicorn Sparkle. Well, she puts a tutu on Sparkle and he eats it. He puts she puts flower garlands on uh, a garland of flowers on Sparkle and he eats them. And he smelled kind of funny. And he had fleas. So it was not at all what she expected her Sparkle unicorn to look like. So she's like, you know, this is not what I ordered. And she decides to send Sparkle back. But then of course she decides once he's gone and from away from her that she kind of misses Sparkle and has to run 
and stop the truck and save Sparkle and bring Sparkle back. Now here's the thing, it never, never, never states in the book that Sparkle is not a unicorn. But we know as the reader, just from looking at Sparkle, that Sparkle is a goat. So she decides, I mean, he always keeps his horn, but he's a goat. Uh, so it was, it's, 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 it's funny. There are laugh out loud parts, you know, because Sparkle definitely is not behaving the way she intends a unicorn to behave. So. I love it. Uh, Karen talked about that yesterday or the day before, and I thought, oh yeah, I gotta find that one. I've gotta dig it out somewhere and take a look at it. I love buyer's remorse. Yes. Um, that was it. I'm gonna do mine in, in just a little chunk here because I have three nonfiction picture books in a row. Um, the one is, uh, the first one is Six Dots, which is the biography of Louis Braille. And it talks about his young wife. He was not blind from birth, but it was an accident and then an infection that caused him to become blind in both eyes. He learned how to read, uh, but at the time, the books that were written for blind people basically used punches um, that formed the letters. So big A and B, and you had to run your fingers, of course, over the letters, and you could only get so many on a page. So Louis could read an entire page and perhaps only have two sentences or a paragraph of text, and he thought, there's got to be a better way to do this. And it's how he came to create the Braille alphabet that we use today, uh, which is smaller, you can get much more on a page, and it's, it's just this wonderful look at how genius works, yeah. and I really like that. Um, the next biography I read was called Miss Paul and the President. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the story of Woodrow Wilson coming into town, thinking that all the people that are gathering in town are gathering to see him, and they're actually gathering for a suffrage rally led by Miss Paul. This kind of irritates him just a little, because he thinks people ought to be more excited about seeing the president than this woman who wants to get the rights for women to vote. Uh, thankfully, Woodrow Wilson has a daughter who's smart. And she says, you need to meet with this woman. You need to see what you can do to get women the right to vote. So this is the story of the early movement of the suffrage uh, movement in, here in America, women trying to get the, the right to vote and how one ordinary person can make a big difference. And we love those in our diverse books. And thank goodness for that daughter. Yeah. You know, because if she had not been there to be the person in his ear on the backside of that whole thing, would have turned who out knows, Who knows how it would have turned out, exactly. And then the third one is, my name is James Madison Hemmings, and it is the uh, biography as told by the young James Madison Hemmings, who is the son of he uh, Sally Hemmings and Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and it talks about how they are not allowed to talk about Thomas Jefferson in any way except as their owner, not as their father, and um, you know, how how that makes them feel. And you can only imagine, as you're reading this, to be denied by your own father, to be held as a slave by your own father, is just incredible. And in 32 pages, you get just, that just packs an absolute punch. And a lot of kids won't know this part of history, and here's a, a really good way to introduce it to them, then to turn them to longer works like Jefferson's Children. There are certainly other uh, biographies uh, that can point them to this period of historical time. So more. Uh, let's see. For uh, Good for this time of year is Adam Rex's School's First Day of School. So it's a first, it's a beginning of the school year story told from the point of view of the actual school building. It's a brand new school construction and so the school has no idea what to expect. They, he doesn't really, he doesn't know what school is. He doesn't know who's gonna even be there. The only person he has to um, talk to is the janitor, who is there getting stuff ready, cleaning, and just getting things ready. So he gets excited when he sees all these kids showing up and the teachers showing up. But it shows that he too sees that not everybody's happy to be there. So like the girls walking in said, oh, I don't want to go to school today. And that makes him feel very sad and insecure. You know, he doesn't really know, is he not doing things right? You know, so it's, it's, it's a good first day jitters story, 
told in a very unique way, you know, from the point of view of the actual building. And man, could you get kids to be to think about this? This would be great writing activity with your students. To, you, know, you know, to the inanimate objects in the building, talking about their experiences with the first day of school. So that's Adam Rex. And then, do you have any more? Is that it? No, you go. Okay. Ahead. And then my very last one. I'm going to talk about very short because there's not really much to say about it. Except for October, you know, we're going to be here for Halloween pretty soon. And the new Bad Kitty book is called Bad Kitty Scaredy Cat, and it features Halloween trick-or-treating in it. But, and, you know, some of Bad Kitty's books are, are all right, you know, it's not ones that I necessarily rave about. But this one, really, I enjoyed because it's an ABC book. And it goes through the ABCs multiple times, but with different things, like the costumes, plus the treats. So there are different ways, they, the different um, objects that they use for these alphabets. And they're, I felt that they were kind of creative and inventive ways that they were using the letters. So um, definitely put that on your radar for a Halloween read. So uh, be looking to get it now, so you can have it when Halloween rolls around. And we're already receiving Christmas books. You want to talk about rushing the season. Every time I open a box and there's a Christmas book, I put it aside. I just cannot bear to look at Christmas books yet. But we probably will highlight Christmas books before yeah. too long. We also have an upcoming video on board books and all the, of their varieties. And uh, Poetry Part 2, which I think we've been promising for a while. And one on science fiction. Yep. So you've got a whole bunch coming up. But if you think of something you'd like us to talk about, just let us know. We can now do it in a car. That's right. That's right. So we always want to hear your suggestions. Um, we're getting back to the normal school year for us. So we will uh, most likely be able to get to our more regular routine again. So, you know, we're together on Tuesdays usually. So starting at the end of this month, that will be back on a more regular schedule again. So, you know, sadly, summer is coming to an end. But on the positive side, we get to see each other again more often, us, Terry, and the other faculty members. You know, we kind of miss them over the summer. We do. So it'll be good to get back into the routine of seeing people again. All right, so I hope everybody is enjoying the first of school because several people are starting already. So we're with you in spirit. And uh, let us know if you need anything. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.